Well, hello and welcome back to another week on my allotment. And as you'll have guessed, I've been away for a while. Um, we had our weekend away in the caravan and absolutely wonderful. I know I'm sure caravanning is not everybody's cup of tea, but those who criticise it have never tried it and we love it. And we went away for the weekend and it really felt like uh, normal. Very good. So anyway, we've had our weekend away and I've been busy at work. Lots and lots of demand for work. All this sunshine and rain is causing things to grow. Hedges are growing more than normal. Grass is growing thick and I'm in demand. So I just haven't been able to get up here. And I've got that feeling I get when I can't get up here as often as I'd like that it's all getting away from me. Of course, this is the time of year when everything is growing. And, um, you know, I've, I really haven't been up here now for about a week. And there's weeds everywhere. Um, I try and stay calm about it because I know that, you know, it's an easy problem to solve. As well as the weeds growing, the crops are growing. So that's good news. So I thought, um, I haven't got, it's, it's uh, I'm here after work. I haven't got a lot of time, but then it doesn't take that long to make a video. Not to my, <laughs> not to my standard anyway. So I thought rather than let you wait till next week, I just put something together to let you know that I'm still a, around. The allotment goes on as always. Uh, stuff doesn't stop growing just because I'm busy. Um, and uh, I think I'll do the old uh, Niff and and trivia. So this magazine that I've pulled these uh, questions out of before, there are two left, so here we go. You'll have to excuse these. The, I've said to you before, these aren't actually my glasses. They were given to me by somebody, and, and they work, so that's fine. So I don't have to bring my glasses up the allotment. But I took these away in the caravan and managed to tread on them. They fell off the table, I didn't realise, outdoors, and, and I trod on the gravel, and these were under my boot. So they're even worse than normal. They really don't sit on my head at all now. Either that or my head's misshapen. So, preventing pollination stops cucumbers turning bitter. Fact or fiction? And the second and last one, adding rusty nails to compost gives acid-loving plants an iron boost. I've never heard that one before. But is that fact or fiction? And I'll uh, cover them at the end of the video. Um, and another little question for you. What do you think that is? I'll give you a clue, it's not an apple. This was growing amongst three or four of them like this in my squash bed. All the plants in that squash bed are squash. And I thought, oh, I've got a rogue pumpkin. And I've got four of these growing. And I thought, oh, excellent because my other pumpkin plants aren't doing well. I don't have a single pumpkin yet. And I thought, ah, happy days. I've got some pumpkins. And Bridget's just had a wander around my plot. And she said, that's courgette. I said, that's not a courgette shape. And what's it doing in my squash bed? Anyway, we we took a smaller one, cut it in half and tasted it. And sure enough, it's a blooming courgette. So one of my squash seedlings was a rogue. And now I've got a plant that's twice as big as the squashes growing loads of these. I'm not quite sure what Cheryl will make of that. Anyway, I've take, I have managed to take a few clips. I think I even managed to take some of our uh, weekend walk from the caravan in the Cotswolds. Um, so I'll put a few clips together um, and I'll come back to you at the end. Welcome to Broadway. Another classic weekend walk.
Well, Cheryl's up here doing a sterling job, helping out with the picking. She's currently picking the blueberries. The fruit is really harvesting well. But it's not all fruit. The courgettes are coming thick and fast. Another crop of broad beans. A few radishes with our salad tonight, as were the uh, spring onions. And then the peas. The peas are prolific. Well, she's not looking her best, but in her defence, that's my rotten old sweatshirt that she's wearing to protect her from the black currant juice that she would get over her smart top that she's wore up here. And the picking goes on. Dedication, isn't it, dear? The blueberries, we know, I mean, last year was a wonderful crop, but this year is fantastic. And these containers that we're using, that we've collected through the winter, uh, Cheryl estimates by weight that that's about, what is it, eight or nine pound? Yes, about eight or nine pounds sterling in weight of blueberries because the little containers we buy are about two pound each there's almost nothing in them so we are really getting our money's worth off those four bushes in that raised bed and the wind just carries on blowing but the plot in July is really really producing well Spent an hour picking, and that's today's very modest haul. But I've also taken one and a half kilograms of peas to the farm shop, a couple of courgettes, and a whole punnet of blackberries. So, a good hour on the allotment. Well, a very brief look at the plot on this rather miserable evening. Although the plot really is um, looking wonderful at the moment. I'm really enjoying the brassicas. I've had lots of uh, calabrese and lots of cauliflower. Cauliflower clapton. The peas are just about finished. And then the French beans are now forming as are the runner beans. I'm concentrating now on creating new plants from the runners on the strawberries because these plants are so old they're not producing any real fruit this year leek musselburgh is looking good no rust yet but i'm sure it will come the arch is starting to join in the middle and the jaguar peas over there are now cropping you can see I need some more bottles because my watering system is disappearing under the butternut um, leaves. And here's the plant that I thought was a pumpkin and Bridget put me straight that it's um, a courgette. And there's one in there. Goodness knows how that's happened. The um, Roma tomatoes are ready to ripen. The sweet corn is maturing. Yeah, everything's looking good. These onions are superb. Never seen onions like it. So right now, the plot is looking good. The only real negative on my plot are these pumpkin plants. I've mentioned them before when I've walked around the plot. They simply are not moving and there's certainly no sign of pumpkins. So there's not a lot I can do now. Um, yeah, don't know what to say. But anyway, one negative on a whole site is not too bad. Right, well as promised, here are the answers to those two questions. 
preventing pollination stops cucumbers turning bitter. It is fiction. It is said that if female greenhouse cucumber flowers are pollinated, their fruit will taste bitter. The general advice has always been to remove all the male flowers, right? Wrong. I'm a member of a research-based gardening group. This is Dr. Faye Edwards who write the article, not me. I am a member of a research-based gardening group run by highly qualified horticultural professors. They are American and had never heard of the idea that you'd need to remove male cucumber flowers to prevent fruit bitterness. So it seems to be a UK only myth. However, there is a lot of evidence that suggests cucumbers turn bitter under stress. This can be caused by drought, poor nutrition or extremes of temperature. So has this been causing the problem all along and not the pollination? So a UK only myth. And the second one, adding rusty nails to compost gives acid loving plants an iron boost. And again, it is fiction. Acid loving plants like blueberries need iron to thrive. Some people swear by adding rusty nails to planting holes to act as a slow release fertiliser. Does it work? No. Rust is a solid form of iron that doesn't dissolve in water. So it can't be taken up by plant roots. If your plants need an iron boost, look for sequestered iron. Simply add a dose to your watering can to give acid loving plants all the iron they need in a form they can absorb. Leave your nails in the shed. Yeah, interesting. I'd never heard that one about the rusty nails. And for years now I've had a book, The Wit and Wisdom of Gardening, and I've never really looked at it. I've looked occasionally, but I've started reading through it. And I just genuinely opened it at a page and thought, whatever's on that page, I'll read out. So here we are, some general wit and wisdom. However small your garden, you must provide two of the serious gardener's necessities. What do you think two of the serious gardener's necessities in a garden are? A tool shed and a compost heap. I could not agree more. I would say when setting up a garden or an allotment, especially an allotment, first thing you need to sort is a shed. That's the first thing I did here, albeit that other shed. If you go back and watch Hanley Plotter's allotment number one or two or whatever. Um, and then the compost heap so that as you dig and turn over the ground and prepare the new site, everything can go on the compost heap. It has always amazed me that manufacturers of slug bait and other such garden aids should proudly announce on the label that their products are harmless to pets. A pesticide that can guarantee to cause pets irreparable damage would, I'd have thought, sell like hotcakes. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying anything about the cats that mess constantly in my back garden. As a keen gardener, I am a regular drowner of slugs in beer. I have never used beer as a slug trap, never. I think it's too good to waste. The true gardener must be brutal and imaginative for the future. Yeah, I can see that one. Anyway, mildly interesting. Well, short and sweet this week. And uh, I appreciate that the best way to run a YouTube channel is to be predictable and regular. And, you know, my daughter posts every Sunday morning at nine o'clock. Um, and that's the best way to do it, because then people know where they stand. They know when the video is going to be posted and they can watch it at regular intervals. Well, my life doesn't work that way. Um, it did during lockdown. I posted every week, every weekend. But now that um, we're gaining our uh, freedoms back, uh, we're getting out and about and using the caravan and life is a bit more busy so I don't I make no apology for it it's just you know it's the way it is so I will post as and when I can I'd like to do it every week but that may not be possible so um, it is what it is but anyway thank you to those who've subscribed recently I've had a few new subscribers um, and welcome along 
um, and uh, all being well I shall post at some point after this coming weekend I think but thank you for watching thank you for um, sticking with me look after yourselves and I shall see you next week bye for now